Okay, so I'm going to change the view here, and right now we are inside my Upwork profile, as you can see here. And I came across this particular job description here, a company named shoeauthority.com. They recently lost traffic, and they don't know why, and I've already reviewed their site, so I know a little bit more about it. But let's say that you wanted to verify, you know, if you could perform the this job at hand so what you could do before that is look at the activity of this job right have a lot of people applied 50 plus I would say that's a lot but um, just keep that in mind last reviewed by client so they were active about 30 minutes ago and they're interviewing a lot of people almost 20 people personally probably wouldn't even apply for this position uh, just giving those numbers but for the example purposes of this video I'll be showing you guys how to do a quick technical analysis for SEO, even if you're a complete beginner. So I'm gonna copy the URL, and you could do this, you can go about this a couple of ways, right? You can, you can do a tool like SEMrush, which is a bit more expensive, or you could pay a one-time fee for a tool like Screaming Frog, which is what I have here. And they have a free trial where you can crawl 500 URLs uh, per website. So there's a free version. I'm going to paste the company's name right there. And there's a couple of things too I could do actually. If you get the paid version, which is optional, right? Then you can go to configuration, spider. And I know that this website has a lot of images. And I don't want this crawl to take too long. So I'm just going to deselect all that, hit OK, and then click start again. And I'll kind of walk you guys through how some of this program works because I know uh, if you're a complete beginner this can look a bit intimidating I get that but you can look at different tabs here on the left side like the internal internal external security response codes URLs and then you can basically read all that most of this stuff is for on-page SEO like I know most of you guys know what the headers are so that those are here content information like the word count is there images etc and I'm getting ahead of myself, so typically you'd wait until this is at a 100%, and then you can start reviewing, you know, what's what's wrong with the website, you know, like thing, are things being indexed, or are web pages being indexed, which aren't, and which are, and are there any important uh, web pages that aren't indexed that should be, and are those, you know, those are some things that you could take a look at. Is there a lot of duplicate content? Is that why there's a lot of, you know, canonicalized. Uh, index statuses but before getting too into it you can um, let me restart that you can basically get most of the information you need from this right here issues uh, once this is done running I'm gonna pause it right but you get the idea once this loads to 100% you're gonna have all the information you need to make a better recommendation from an SEO perspective and obviously as you guys probably know, looking at reviewing on page, off page and technical SEO analysis is important for all websites. But this is just a quick little way to get a lot of information with a really simple tool and powerful tool called uh, Screaming Frog. And here you can see right away, you can make this bigger, you know, what are the errors and what do they pertain to, right? So these are issues, you have warnings, opportunities, etc. So all this information here are essentially best practices for SEO for the most part. And it's going to be up to you guys as the SEO specialist to determine, you know, which areas are priority and which aren't. So for example, this is a really easy, you know, win if we were to make these recommendations. If the page titles are too long, then that's bad because they're going to be truncated in Google search. And let's see if we could find a good example here. So this is the title that pops up in the Google SERPs results where it's supposed to. But when you click on the SERP snippet, uh, you could see here that that's what it looks like. It stops at three mistakes to avoid, right? And that's for this URL. So if I take this URL and I paste it into Google, it says three mistakes to avoid. Actually, that does populate there. But typically, for the most part, let me compare them side by side. How to store shoes with photos. Oh, it's missing this. So it's missing the 16 strategies. And so when people go to Google and find this particular blog post, you know, there's this discrepancy between the full page title that this owner of this website wanted, 
but this is what ends up showing because this is a way too long of a title. It's over 60 characters in length, as we can see here. And so by, and then Google, what, what they do by default is they truncate it because it's not the best SEO practices to have such a long title. And that's basically what we're seeing here. And they have about, about 17 URLs. So anyways, I would say that this is the quick and easy way to look at errors for, you know, for a website's errors in particular. But another way to go about it is looking at the overview and we can see the same thing. So you can see that I clicked on this and it took me here. We have 17 URLs that are over 60 characters in length, which means that when they populate in Google, they'll be truncated. So they're not using uh, best SEO practices. And so just rewriting these to be more short and concise to fit the, this character limit is ideal. And that's all that's saying. Um, Another really useful feature that we could see here are missing meta descriptions. So we could see that some of these pages may or may not be as important as your blog post or your product pages, right? But it's still a good idea to include some of these missing meta descriptions. And we could see if there are any really long URLs over 155 characters, which we do see. And if I click on this once, or twice it'll sort them in order from uh, most to from greatest to least greatest or from most to to less basically and let's see what else in descending order that's the word I was looking for we can also see if these uh, what is this meta keywords I believe that pertains to this here you know including meta keywords can is important but it's not a direct ranking factor uh, so I'm gonna skip over this but you should probably include a main keyword inside your meta description and that these two things relate to each other. And then as you guys know, or may or may not know, which you probably do, it's best practices to include at least one H1 inside a website and then organize the page content with H2s, H3s, H4s, etc. Um, but yeah, you can see a lot of information here. And another really important easy win for these website owners are including alt text so this website is not missing any alt text but um, since i optimized the crawl i told the spider configuration not to you know scan the images so that's probably why we're we're seeing all zeros here but if i were to scan the entire website i'm sure i could find uh missing alt text images and probably show you guys what that would look like perhaps maybe let's try opening this up so if i select any pair of shoes and i clicked right click on it on the image and click on inspect i could see the image class here source data and they do have an alt text you can see that alt text they do have it but who knows maybe they have some images that um that don't have an alt text maybe like this one yeah anyways that's how you do that and some other things that you can look at here are, yeah, I wouldn't mind too much around the pagination directives, hreflang, it's a bit more advanced, JavaScript, non-descriptive anchor text in internal outlinks. So what that means, let me see if they, let me shrink this. So we could see that inside these pages here they're linking out to other internal pages but they don't have a descriptive anchor text and that's what it's saying here we could see that some of these links say skip content hit pane read the full article etc but if i want to find that link let's see best shoes for hit pain there we go what's this one Anyway, some other things to look at would be the page speed of the site. And what you could do is, well, before I showed you guys that, um, for the most part, you're, you'll probably be under internal uh, URLs. I believe that's what it stands for, but you can basically see all the URLs that appear on a website right here. Um, don't really know what this means. I think it's just like HTML coding information that's not necessary for, for SEO. Status codes, that's good to know, you know, which pages are doing okay. Uh, and you can see the status here as well. Which ones have been moved permanently, 
redirected, what's their index status, etc. And I believe they have um, just a lot more information here as to where the old URLs redirect, redirected to. And we can see that here. Let's see, we can see external URLs. So we could see that this is a review page here or a blog post that's linking out to Amazon. And that's all we're seeing here. That's the information there, security. And I'm not sure I use that. Response codes, as we've seen. Uh, header information, header two, some of the content. And we could see if they have a low word count. We could see that here. I don't trust the word counters here or in any program all that well because uh, they all vary. It doesn't matter what you use. And so I would just take it with, just keep that in mind. Structured data information, that's a good one. Um, and if you wanted to see like the layout structure of the website, you could click this, this little like, four little characters here. And I'll be honest with you, it's a bit hard to read for me, but you can kind of get the idea here inside the website URL. We have an about folder, which pertains to this page here, category pages. And that's, these are the different subfolders within that category folder. And you can see their URLs here. And then you have a lot of different reviews, pages, contact, pages, etc. So if you wanted to get a quick overview on how to do, you know, a technical SEO audit, you could click on issues and you could quickly scan the website here in case you didn't know that. And alternatively, you can go here and then just scan different things that pertain to the website. You could get a lot of information with this particular tool. And so I recommend it if you wanted something a bit more visual, then you could use a tool like a SEMrush to kind of see, you know, what the website would look like from a technical audit point of view but with more visuals and so that's that so that's a quick little uh, way to do a technical seo audit i didn't want to get too deep into the details because it's going to take a long time but uh yeah that's kind of how you do it and also if you're a complete beginner in seo and you'd like to learn about some of the ways that i've you know i've gone about making you know money as a complete beginner in seo self-taught and everything uh, and I'm an independent freelancer and I do most of my work on Upwork. But if you want some of my tips on what I did to earn an income as an independent freelancer, then go ahead and um, I'm going to provide you this link where you can go ahead and grab that information. Uh, you can sign up for my newsletter and I'll send you the PDF infographic after you put your first name, last name and your email. Then I'll give you the five hidden tips to start making more money with SEO. So if that sounds interesting, then go ahead and sign up for my newsletter. I'll send you the PDF right away. So yeah, check out my other videos and I'll be making more videos soon. Uh, until next time.